Hi, I'm Margret. In this video I'm going to introduce you to the big O notation. In computer science, big O is used to classify algorithms based on the scalability. It also allows us to estimate the worst case running time of an algorithm based on the input size. Before we have a closer look at the big O notation, I want to distinguish between two terms, performance and complexity. When we talk about performance, we talk about the time an algorithm takes to execute, the memory that is needed, etc. Those variables depend on the computer, the code, even the compiler. Complexity, on the other hand, shows how the resource requirements of an algorithm scale. Complexity affects performance, but not the other way around. What that means is the following. If I have a algorithm with considerable complexity, it will take a considerable amount of time to run. However, if I have a very slow program, that doesn't mean that it was executing a complex algorithm. There could be all kinds of other reasons why the program was slow. In order to understand the complexity of an algorithm, we are going to count the number of steps that have to be taken during execution. This is quite different from measuring the elapsed time. Let's assume for our purpose that each step, addition, subtraction, returning a value, etc., has the same cost. Needless to say, this is quite an oversimplification. It won't affect our result though, because the difference between the actual value and the assumed simplified value is negligible. Let's have a look at the first example. This method is called get last element. It has one parameter, which is an integer array, and it returns the last element of the array. Let's look at each step that has to be executed in order to run this code. First, we are accessing the final attribute length from the array. Then we subtract one. The resulting value is the index of the array. So we are accessing the index and then we are returning the value. Altogether, that makes four steps. Whether my array has two elements or 200 or 20,000 doesn't make any difference regarding the number of steps. There are always four steps to access the last element. We talk about constant time functions. Those are functions that take a constant amount of time independent of the size of the array. Let's have a look at the second example. Here we have a method called sum. This time we use a loop to access all the elements of the array and to add them one by one to the variable sum. We start by counting those steps that are executed only once and that are outside of the for loop body. So here we count the initialization of sum, initialization of the control variable and returning sum. Altogether those are three steps. And then we're going to count the steps that are repeated over and over again. Those are the steps in the body of the loop. We start by accessing the attribute length, comparing to the control variable, accessing the array element on the given index, adding it to the sum, assigning it to the sum, and incrementing the control variable. Altogether, that makes six steps. Some of you might have noticed that the for loop condition is executed one extra time at the very end. This gives us two additional steps, one to access the array length and one to compare it with the control variable. Such detail is not necessary in our context. 
but since we think of it already, I'm going to add 2 to 3, which is going to make 5. Now when I try to find out what is the number of steps in the whole algorithm, I need to know how many times is the loop executed. And I can see it right here, we're starting at 0 and the i is incrementing as long as it is less than numbers.length. That means we are going to execute the loop n times if my array has n elements. For each of the executions of the loop body, we, we are going to have six steps to execute. That means we are going to have altogether 6n steps only in the four loop bodies and then the additional 5 outside the loop. So 6n plus 5 is the number of steps. Notice that the number of steps is a function of n. This means the number of steps is proportional to n and such a function is called a linear time function.